Hello, welcome back to Tommy's Top Picks. Today, we're going to be doing a Pokemon version of the Booster Box game. So John did this with Cryptid Nation 2nd Edition. I ordered a case of Pokemon Fusion Strike. So this is a loose box that I had. So this is the first box. If this box pays for itself in singles worth $2 or more, then I will sell the singles and, buy, and open another one of the boxes from the case and we will continue until we do not make the value of the box. So let's go over to TCG player. The value of the box right now is sitting around $95. So let's say $95 is our target to hit. Uh, it has gone down substantially. It was about 120 when it came out and now we're down to 94. It did dip below. So it is coming back up a bit, but uh, the second printing just came, or not the second printing, but the uh, second wave just came out and is hitting stores. So the price should go down a little bit more, but we shall wait and see. So the singles that we're going to be looking for, these are the big hits of the set. Gengar VMAX, which is the one I really want. Espeon VMAX are basically, if we pull either of these two, it will pay for the box. Uh, Mew VMAX will almost get us there. That's the alternate art version. And as we go down, you see that it quickly <laughs> drops off to at the bottom of the first page. So the 24th result here, we're down to $7. So the issue with Fusion Strike is there are so many ultra rares and booster boxes are kind of limited. They typically don't have more than two or three of these and so if you see if we continue there are we're on the second page now so we're at 48 and we're still uh, at ultra rare and ultra rare goes all the way to it looks like uh, 71 this would be so and that's down to 75 cents but it's an ultra rare so you can see that there's a big difference in the price of the singles for the ultra rares. And then, so nothing below the ultra rares. So no uh, normal cards, yellow border cards are going to be counted. So we can kind of skip through those. Yeah, even some of these ultra rares are under $2. So even those won't be. So let's get into the box. So it is a hill. It's very high roll. Uh, I would not be surprised if this is a one and done booster box game. But there is a chance. Always a chance. Pack one. Full hollow Steelix. Very cool card, but not in our above $2 range. Still set it aside. Second one. Hey, I was hoping to pull this one. Two full hollows in a row. I'll take it butterfree. So this one's actually starting to see some play, which is very interesting. So this one might go up, we'll see. Keep those. Oh, let me show the code cards. That's backwards. Still backwards, you can figure it out. 
Bismillah. Latios. Good card. Two out of three full hollows. Oh, here we go. Pikachu V. Let's see if that gets us. It is really cool. I mean, the V cards are, they're a style. Let's see, where's Pikachu V at? Is it on page one? It's not on page one. Let's see. Not on page two. Page three, 70 cents, okay. All right, still not in our Above two dollar pool. Let's see. Arcanite. Arcanine. Always one of my favorites as a kid. And a hunt tail. Nope. Nothing there. Some of these packs are easy to open, some are not. Alright. Here's a Growlithe for Arcanine. I always thought this art, this art is so cool. For Smeagol. Nope. Oh, where's our... There it is. Okay. A lot of... Nothing. Well, this is eventful, right? So I guess... Yeah. I mean, it only takes one. Still a lot of packs left. It only takes one pack to... Hey, for alligator. Getting a bunch of cool full hollows. It's always fun. And a golem, star you reverse. Nothing there. So one theory I have is that we are in a very bare market for Pokemon Electrode. Nothing here. We're in a very bear market for Pokemon right now. Boxes are very cost effective compared to what they were just a couple of months ago, end of last year. Um, I don't know if that's a lack of interest. There's no play going on. There's not a whole lot of play going on right now. And I think everyone is just really waiting for Pokemon Live, which I think will bring a lot of interest back into the game. Uh, my wife and I started playing Arceus, which is super fun. The new Pokemon game. It's a, you run around in the open world. It's everything I wanted out of a Pokemon game as a kid. So that's super exciting. She's actually playing it now. Full Hollow. Playing Doris. Uh, yeah, she's, she's playing it now. After I finish this box, I'm going to go join her. It's been... It's relaxing, it's fun. It's the way I like to describe it is you see a thing, you're like, oh, that's a thing, let's go check it out. That's cool. And then you get to the thing and you're like, oh, there's another thing. Let's go check that thing out. 
and it just is a nice repeat. Nothing there. It's a nice, enjoyable game loop. So the actual gameplay is really fun. The story's kind of neat too. So it takes place before Red and Blue. So the original games, it takes place before that. Oh, there's a Genesec. Okay, so this is one of the meta cards. So this should be, this should be on the list here. This is played in the Mew VMAX deck. Genesect V, $5.35. Okay. So we are on the board. $5.35 out of our $95 box. Okay. And we got, we're almost about halfway through. But yeah, the game's really fun. The story takes place before Red and Blue, like I was saying. And they, in a world where Pokemon are, it's not the norm to catch them or to have them around. So a lot of the humans are very freaked out by the idea of having them around, which I find very funny. And then some of them are like, oh, I need this thing done. There's a Pokemon. Geodude, there we go. So there was a woman that was like, hey, I am having trouble lifting these heavy things that I need to lift every day. It'd be really great to have a Geodude. So then you go out and you grab a Geodude and then you bring it to them. And then she's just like, thank you. And then there's a lot of quests like that where they're like, hey, there's this specific Pokemon that would really help me. Hey, there's the Genesis. I think that's the alt art. Let me check on that. That might be. There we go. 1369 we're over 20 bucks no around there okay around 20 bucks okay and we're about halfway through the pack halfway through the box yeah really enjoying the game uh definitely gonna see it through i think the story is interesting the gameplay loop is fun it's a very great way to unwind at the end of a long day on the couch. Hey, another Butterfree. Two more and we'll have our playset. Well, what's interesting is the top current meta deck right now is... So Fusion Strike is actually a really great set for people just getting into the game because the main deck is... Mu V Max. That is the top S tier deck right now that everyone's trying to beat. The rest of the meta is decks trying to beat it. And Zumaril is our rare, un -hollow, un non hollow. Um, but even though the rest of the meta revolves around it, it is still the top, which I find very interesting. And it works with Genesect. So basically, Genesect is your draw engine. Uh, once per turn, his ability Fusion Strike system. Once during your turn, you may draw cards until you have as many in your cards in your hand as you have Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. So you want to fill up your bench with Fusion Strike Pokemon, and you and Fusion Strike Pokemon are only in Fusion Strike so far. So when you're making a Fusion Strike deck, you're going to be using a lot of cards from Fusion Strike. So when you oh, nope, nothing here. Ooh, Lapras. Um, so basically, most of the cards, besides a couple trainers and a couple of things here and there, cheap singles, you can basically just open Fusion Strike and all of your rares, your Vs, are in here. Oh, snap! Gengar VMAX. Not the alt art, but... There we go. What's that one? That one's, I think, 15 bucks. Yep, yeah, right next to it. 1448, we're moving up. Still got half the box left, pretty much. Ooh, there we go, sure hits. Come on, there you go. So yeah, so I think it's a great entry set if you are looking to get into the game, get back into the game, 
just buy a fusion strike. Now, with the new set about to come out in a couple weeks, I wouldn't be surprised. Victini. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Curse lows are rare. I wouldn't be surprised if it could also go the other way and in the new set something breaks it because it does look like Pokemon is moving back to a two prize format. Of course, VMAXs will still be in until rotation. However, yeah. oh snap, John. <laughs> yeah, this is the one you wanted, right? Mew, Mew VMAX. All right, so that's a hit. I know that's a hit. That's on the first page. Yep, 28 bucks, almost 30 bucks. Schwing. Okay. Shaping up, shaping up. Oh, Rillaboom. I think this is one of the like 70 cent ones. Yeah, because the VMAX is only a couple bucks. Yeah, 71 cents. All right, well, it's something. So I've been really tempted and I've been doing a lot of research on this Mew VMAX deck. Mew VMAX deck. Because a big thing about it is if you look at the bottom, it's very hard to see because of the hollow glare but it has no retreat cost and it has 310 health and you can choose one of your benched fusion strike Pokemon's attack and use that. So you have a choice of your attacks for two colorless energy or for two psychic energy, you can do 130 damage and it's not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's just doing raw damage. So it outputs a ton of damage. It has a bunch of damage. It can full retreat. Hey, one more, and we have our full play set of Butterfree. Full hollow. <laughs> I want to look into that deck now that I almost have it. I forget where I saw that. I'll find it. But yeah, it's one of those rogue small decks that have been popping up. I always find those fascinating because it tries to use cards that are completely off meta. Because the meta almost forms around itself. The thing about Pokemon is you get these really rare cards, right? They're really hard to pull, hard to find. Most times you need three or four of them. So just because you pull one, doesn't you're not making the deck until you get a playset. Abzul is our rare. Okay, we're getting pretty low here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're okay. We could we could actually do this, which is making me nervous because then I have to crack the case. But maybe if I crack the case, I'll find my full playset. And then that means, wait, where do we go? Okay. Oh, Corvus. If I get a playset, maybe I can start playing some webcam games. I've been waiting for Pokemon Live, but that was supposed to come out in November. We're still waiting. I have no idea. I forgot to look. I was going to look before I made this video, but I did not. So, but last I heard, we still have no idea. Grimmsnarl, full hollow. Some of these newer Pokemon are just so wacky. So yeah, because I mean, if you look at, here's another code card. Um, if you look at the back of the code card, and I just realized we are horizontally switched. My bad. Uh, so all of these are for Pokemon Live, the Redeem Your Codes for Pokemon Live. And Pokemon Live's not out yet. You can still use it, PTCGO. They will transfer over. Your packs will not. I believe the packs are all being turned into some form. There are many currencies as with all of these games. And if you have, I believe it's 125 packs unopened when it flips over you will have the max free currency you can redeem so if you 
plan, if you, ha if you, I feel the best way to do it is go buy a bunch of really cheap packs, like the cheapest packs you can buy codes for and set up your account to have 125 packs of that because it doesn't matter what pack it just matters toxicity full hollow looking like a g um because it doesn't care what kind of packs so you can just buy the old cheap packs and fill your inventory up with 125 and then you will have the max currency and you should be able to make a deck because I have a feeling, Electrode, oof. I have a feeling that the cost to make a meta deck in PTCG Live is going to be a lot cheaper and smoother than it currently is in PTCGO because right now what you have to do is you have to go to a third party site, buy codes, Absolute. Uh, you have to buy codes, put them in, copy and paste them in over and over and over in sets of 10, and then trade those packs. So basically packs are the currency in PTCGO. So if you are looking for specific cards and you don't feel like opening thousands and thousands of packs to get them, because that's sometimes what it takes, you can trade packs for your uh, for specific cards you're looking for and some of them can be really expensive and also if you so basically anything that's not fusion strike right now people aren't trading for so if you have evolving skies chilling rain another absol back to back that's a cool art crocana so So basically people are only trading for the most, most current set. So you have, if you have the older set, it's kind of like an outdated currency if that exists. Like you have Roman, Roman money. Swampert, a full hollow. All right, so we have one pack left. So I do not think this hits 90. So here's the pack. Do we cross it? Oh, Cinderace V. I don't think we crossed it. Cinderace V is an 80 cent card. It's wild. Wild. How cheap some of these are. But, all right, so we got Mew V Max. Let's see. Mew V Max at 28. So let's call that 30. And then we got Genesect and Genesect V Full Art and Gengar V Max. Each about, let's be generous and say 15 bucks. So it's another 30 bucks. So we're at 60. And then we have Genesect V, which was five bucks. So we're at like 65 bucks with a decent hit. And that's the fusion strike booster box game it did not go well for us maybe we will try again with the new uh the new brilliant star set that's coming out we'll see i'll grab a box of that we'll at least do one box and we'll see if we do the booster box game but until next time don't play the fusion strike booster box game buy singles have a good night everyone <laughs>